Last time you might have been a bit surprised or startled or even scandalized that I announced that next episode would be about we too are Trinity. We are, of course, not a divine Trinity, but there is something very Trinitarian about humanity, about the universe we live in. We will discover this bit by bit. I know it's not... Um, it's not traditional or it's not even a custom to call um, reality Trinitarian, um, but you will see why I'm saying this and what it is useful for. In everything we do and experience, there is always, let's say, three aspects that are united. There are always three aspects that we discover in our life when we reflect on what we are, how we are, where we want to go, how do we live. There's always three aspects that are very, very fundamental, this, this, this um, triplicity of our life, and that need um, a, 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 a cause, an exterior cause, to unite the three. Um, as I said, we will discover this bit by bit, but I'll just give some very basic examples. For example, um, when we face reality around us, we are living in a certain, in certain circumstances, in a place, at a time, there's three things we can do with respect of reality. We can change it. We can plant trees. We can build houses. We can take matter to change it into, into uh, a piece of art, a chair. We, all the time in our life, we are changing reality around us. And in fact, it's not just changing the exterior reality, reality, but in a way we also assimilate that reality to ourselves. When we cook, when we make a nice meal or a simple meal, whatever, when we eat, we are assimilating that world around us. So in fact, we are changing it very radical, radically because the world around, something in the world around us actually disappears and it becomes us, like the potato or the piece of bread I'm eating. So we can change reality. On the other hand, we can also do something with reality without ever touching it or changing it, hurting it, or even making it more beautiful. There's something that we can do with reality that doesn't influence reality at all. And that is knowing reality and thinking about reality and reflecting on reality. Asking questions about reality. What is the human nature? Do we have a soul? Does God exist? Is God part of, a, of the reality? So um, we can also reflect on reality without changing it. We can even think about unchangeable things in that nature. Of course, we can respect the tree and not cut a chair out of it. That means I do not change nature, but I could change it. But we can also reflect about what in nature I cannot change. For example, the human soul, uh, the elements. There are lots of things that I cannot change, but not just because I could not change them because of my limited capacities. For example, uh, painting the sun or... Um, putting the sun in a box or putting the moon in a box. Of course, I am not capable of that. But there are also realities that are by themselves not changeable. When I think about existence, when I think about the elements, when, well, there are lots of things that I cannot change, even if I would like to, even if I were capable of doing very, very strong things, there are things that I cannot change. And they are unchangeable in themselves. They are necessarily the way that they are and they cannot be otherwise. Well, that's reflecting in a way that is scientific. Changing reality um, 
or thinking about unchanging, re unchangeable um, reality. That's two very different things. One is craftsmanship. Craft craftsmanship, it's art um, in whatever way. And the other is scientific thinking. Now there's also a third way of dealing with reality. I can also deal with persons. And persons, in fact, I don't want to change them. But I may choose to love them. And love is not at all something you do by necessity. Science is about necessities. What cannot be changed and cannot be otherwise than that it is. Whereas, of course, in friendship, you could not have friendship with a person. You could choose not to have friendship. And the way you develop friendship is also very particular because, in fact, you love the person and you don't want to change the person. You might offer help to the person to change himself, but that's not important uh, for uh, scientific thinking. That is moral thinking. That is friendship. That is love. So there are those three aspects of our lives. I change reality. I try to understand reality as it is. And I have friendships. Those are three very different levels. And in fact, to unite them, you need something to go beyond those three. To really understand how I can end work and reflect on reality and even share my reflections with my friends. There must be some reason beyond that. So we see whatever it is, by the way, that reason beyond. I see that I have three aspects that are to be united by a common cause. I have a tree unity, a triplicity that is united or other ways of saying there is a trinity. Another way of looking at that is talking about, for example, the body, the soul and the spirit. But we'll see to that next time.